Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Second Cup of Coffee. Pastor Tom here with you. Uh, so excited. We're going to launch something new today. It's the fifth Thursday of the month. That happens every so often within the year. And so what we've decided on these fifth Thursdays is to do a Second Cup Reheat. What is a reheat, you ask? Well, have you ever had a cup of coffee and you, you left it on the counter or you left it somewhere in the house, you got busy, and then you thought, where's my cup of coffee? And you went back and it was a little bit cold. So you popped it in the microwave, heated it back up, took a drink, you're like, wow, that's exactly what I needed. Well, that's exactly what we're going to give to you. These are past conversations or past people that we've had. Maybe it might even be something that I've done in the past that we're going to bring back because the message is still good. You know, it might have got down the line a little bit. We might have forgot where we put it, but we may need to hear it again. So this is going to be our first installment of the second cup of coffee reheat. And we're super excited. It's going to go along with our theme this month, which is forgiveness. And we had a powerful testimony sometime back with Roxanne Wilson, who's part of our congregation here at Rancho Christian Center, talking about forgiveness with her mother, even at the time of her mom passing. So good so powerful and so redemptive. So please take a few minutes, grab a second cup of coffee and watch us as we do this reheat. God bless you. Good morning and welcome to a second cup of coffee. My name is Roxanne Wilson and I'm here today to share a personal story with you. One that I've recently have gone through. My mom passed on August 7th. Um, my mom had been very sick. She had a stroke in 92 and was diagnosed with dementia about five years ago. My sister and I got the call um, one night, a Saturday night, and we went straight to the hospital and we found my mom very close to death that day. She had been diagnosed with pneumonia. Um, her dementia was really bad. She was not connecting uh, with us mentally. Um, and just very, she was on oxygen and IVs and, you know, I was looking at my frail mom and she was very close to death. And I was overcome with emotions as I am now even just thinking about it because backing up a little bit, my mom and I had a very volatile relationship. My mom and dad struggled with addiction and as a result of that, I ended up in a foster home um, as a toddler. I was just a wee little girl and was sexually and physically abused there. And I, it changed the core of who I am for the rest of my life until I had met the Lord. But I blamed my mom a lot for that. And I carried a lot of unforgiveness. And I was a broken little girl who ran away from home and I was just lost and angry and full of rage and she couldn't keep me home and I didn't want to be home and I ultimately became a drug addict at a very young age and just ran the streets and so when I was home all we did was fight and I hated her I just felt like it was you know maybe her fault that my life that I was so messed up and I was at the hospital that day looking at her and telling myself, this can't be over. This can't end like this because there was so much emotion that I was flooded with. And there was the, all the hurt, the past hurt and anger and ultimately the unforgiveness and things that I had felt I didn't know I had. I've been a Christian for over 20 years and I've been carrying this thing in my heart, this, this unforgiveness and bitterness towards my mom this whole time. And I thought I had been healed. I thought it was a part that I had given to God and it wasn't. But I think that I knew that it wasn't. I think that there was a part of me that felt like she maybe didn't deserve forgiveness. And in the meantime, I feel like in that moment, I was overcome with emotions. And again, I was looking at my mom saying, it can't be over like this. She can't leave. And I 
I laid my head on her barely breathing chest and my head was right on her heart. And she was so not non-responsive. And I said to her, I whispered with tears streaming down my face as they are now. I said, mom, I'm sorry for being such a naughty girl to you. I didn't know if I was gonna get a response, but I knew I had to tell her. I just told her I'm sorry. And my mom reached her hand up and she started stroking my hair for the first time in 50 years. And she said, I forgive you. And she says, and I'm sorry too. And just like that, in that moment, oh, it was such a gift that God gave me. My mom connected through her sickness, through her dementia, my mom connected. And for the first time in 50 years, it broke. All the anger was gone, the bitterness was gone, the unforgiveness was gone. Everything I had felt in my heart was gone in that very moment. And I was so grateful. I just laid there and sobbed, you know, on her chest. But I thought to myself, it didn't have to be 50 years of, of what I was going through, that, that thing in my heart. I didn't have to wait 50 years, but I was so stubborn and angry that I allowed that to fester. And God gave me that gift in that moment. It was gone. And I looked at my mom and I got to see what God sees. And I looked at her with such love and, and, and just a pure love that I'd never felt before. And really was just able to see my mom through God's eyes. And I just broke. She was so beautiful and so precious to me. And the love that I felt and even the love that I felt from my mom, it was so beautiful and overwhelming. But I took away from that when I left and I've been thinking about that. And the reason why I even want to share my story with you is because I know I'm not the only one, even as a Christian who walks around thinking, oh, I've given all those areas to God. And, and I hadn't, I hadn't. I was fooling myself, I was fooling everybody else. I hadn't, but I didn't have to wait 50 years. And so I have huge regrets. My, my twin brother passed a year ago and it was a sudden death that I didn't get to say goodbye. I didn't get to tell him, I love you. I didn't get to say, I'm sorry for anything that I've ever done to you. And so my encouragement today is, is to not wait you know, if you feel like there's something in your heart or something that you're struggling with, with unforgiveness, I, I just want to encourage you to deal with that. You know, don't wait till somebody's on their deathbed. I feel like I cheated myself out of so many years of just walking in freedom, true freedom, and a relationship with my mom that I could have had. So think about that. And, and I hope that my story gives you hope and it encourages you. And I just, I, I say again, if there's something that in your heart as you hear my story, if there's someone God's showing you or someone that you're thinking of, please go deal with that. And, and don't, don't let that moment pass. So I just wanna leave you with this. It's a scripture in Proverbs 17, nine. It says, love prospers when a fault is forgiven but dwelling on it separates close friends. Don't let it, unforgiveness separate you anymore. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.